Hello. I'd like to uh, address the problem that um, exists about uh, evil and why it isn't actually removed. Why is it, everyone asks, that, uh, or many people ask, that um, evil doesn't go away or that, indeed, if God really was a kind and loving God, why on earth doesn't he stop the evil that we see around us? There is good, but we see much evil. And why is it that God, if he is a kind and loving and omnipotent and omniscient, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-loving, all-powerful, if he can, why doesn't he do anything? That's the question. But if we look at our human situations, we see very often that even in the environment, it's human beings that very often seem to cause problems for each other and their other species on the planet and so on. And then we're branching out elsewhere and we might be doing the same thing. And it seems to me that it's very often in our relating to one another that we are causing the trouble. Because if I am relating badly with you, then, uh, then uh, you know, if I'm doing you harm um, in my relation with you, then that's causing more sorrow and suffering in the world. And uh, that's an undesirable state because that harms me too. Um, and if I do it to myself, then I'm harming myself and I'm harming somebody else possibly as well. So it's in relationship that uh, these problems seem to be quite focused. So let's just examine, uh, first of all, what effective relationship um, might uh, involve. Well, the suggestion I have is that effective relationship partly involves communicating truthful information and in a freely entered into loving situation by the exercise of self-control. In other words, you're not selfish about it. You, in relating to other people, you, you exercise self-control in a loving, truthful kind of way, so you don't mislead and be false and this sort of thing, as best you're able to do so. Now, uh, self-control is related to the expression of free will, in my view. Um, in my previous video, I mentioned about free will. And um, if you're able to exercise or express your free will, then you are self-controlled because you are um, free to use your own self to express the will rather than having it imposed externally um, because external control is not free will um, it's um, uh, that is not free because it's controlled by an external entity whereas if you're controlling it that's your own self-control therefore you're free to do as your will dictates and this is our common human experience that we are able to um, freely choose choice and we're able to choose um, what we want to do and then we come to a more psychiatric term which is volition and I would say that volition is the ability to exercise free will or self-control so um, in fact, when you're unable to exercise self-control or free will, then you don't have volition. And then this is a problem, because it means that you are unhappy, because you cannot self-actualize, you cannot make things happen that you want to happen, and, um, uh, or you, you, you cannot attempt, rather, that's probably more accurate, I would imagine, to make things happen that you would prefer. Um, now, uh, the thing is, in the attempting to make things happen, if the attempt to make things happen is not a freely chosen thing, but it is influenced by false information um, or perceptions, 
then uh, then you have problems because, for example, if someone lies to you and you do what they say, then you're going to do something which is unhelpful to you or to others, and this is a problem because um, you hurt yourself or you hurt others or both. So this is why truth is so important, and that is why communicating truth can be very valuable. Um, I'll come to that in a minute because of course it can go the other way around, can't it? Because truth can be used in bad ways too. We'll come to that. Now, perceptions may be altered by information gain or information loss from past, present or future. Okay. Now the future one is not accessible to us human beings uh, normally um, uh, except in possibly I would suggest exceptional circumstances and that's another topic. Um, when perception is altered changes become possible to choices made and self-control becomes possible and volition levels may increase. So it's a possibility that when your, uh, your perceptions are altered through uh, some information which you have um, come across um, I would suggest that God provides information or sees fit that information should be provided via other people or directly by himself. And sometimes he removes information too from us for good reason. His perfect and good will. Information provides the possibility of attempted rebellion against what we predict. Now that's a very interesting point, isn't it? Because information provides the possibility of attempted rebellion against what we predict. So you might predict that the information I'm giving you is very dangerous and therefore you uh, prevent that information from uh, 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 or that idea because information in this context you can't say whether mine is uh, is uh, it has the level of veracity because I'm human I'm not God no human being is God so therefore you can't verify uh, their veracity because it, they're imperfect God is not a man that he should lie um, so all I'm doing is the best I can and you don't know whether I'm lying or not I can only do what I believe is right um, and um, when you do something that you know is wrong from the information you've gained uh, and what I mean by that is when you attempt to rebel the definition of doing something wrong based on information you've gained in this context and I would like to suggest is rebelling against what we predict will happen that is what I'm suggesting in this and so um, if if you rebel against the prediction of um, what you think um, should be in your self uh, within your your self will your your self control, so it's a matter of conscience uh, and truthfulness. So people can lie, and and they will, and that is why we have evil because they will lie and then they will do things that actually, well I'm just pointing fingers so maybe I shouldn't do that, I was pointing the finger at the video, well maybe I shouldn't do that um, actually um, <sighs> you see it's so easy to do but um, information provides the possibility of attempted rebellion against what we predict so we don't have to that's the important thing as well. It's not inevitable that we are going to do things that uh, are um, uh, wrong. I'm just going to turn this off so it doesn't make a noise during the video. There we go. Right. So it's, um, it's not inevitable that we are going to actually um, uh, uh, choose rebellion. No. We have, if we, if, we exercise free will, 
um, then uh, we will not be exercising rebellion against the what we predict. That may need a bit of work on that. I'm not sure about that exactly. That that I need to rebellion against what we predict. That's that's something I need to work on. But um, um, it's the the thing that we predict. It's because it's a prediction. It's uncertain to us, but it is not uncertain to God because he's omniscient, so he already knows what will happen in the future. Um, he, he already knows that. Now, uh, information offers us the possibility of rebellion, and it offers us the possibility of um, expressing self-control and free will, which results in better outcomes, in my view, because it's rebellion against a predicted outcome, rather than accepting and being mindful, if you like, about things. That's not to say that you don't um, uh, you know, help people, for example. You know, you, you don't, you, you know, I'm not suggesting by any stretch of the imagination that we should be bad Samaritans. No, not at all. Because we should exercise our, we should exercise our free will. And I said, should, well, that, you know, we, it is helpful for us to exercise our free will because we know someone else is suffering. And therefore it is incumbent upon us that it, it, it's not a forced thing. You don't have to do it. But then, on the other hand, you see, on the other hand, you can go the other extreme and you can say, well, I'm not going to do a damn thing, excuse my language. You know, I'm just going to... Um, actually, uh, you know, deliberately not help the person when I know I have the ability to help them. Now, what is that? That is rebellion against my self-expression, my free will choice to help someone when I know it could ease the suffering. You know, I know it will help the suffering, and, and I choose not to do it. Well, that's rebellion against what you see if God is good then his will his will would be to ease the suffering would it not you see if he really is good I mean not some notional God I'm not talking about some notional God that people like to imagine I'm saying that if God really is good then he would want people not to suffer that's why in the Christian idea that we say that uh, you know he has a remedy for all of this and so, um, and I don't really um, think that he actually is some mythical being that doesn't have remedies. He actually does. And what is his remedy? Well, he provides us with information so that we can actually do something. And he also does something else. Not only does he provide us with information so that... One hour so that we can actually be his hands and feet and do the job that he wants of us to help other people and to help ourselves rather than hindering ourselves and hindering others. But actually he does his own thing too, which I'll come on to in a little bit. In my view, and I might be wrong, but this is my view, of course, as with anything that comes out of most people's mouths, I should imagine. Um... I'm just looking at my notes. Um, this offers various outcomes also to become possible through our choices because information can change perceptions and influence for better or worse according to its veracity, its truthfulness. That's what the word veracity is, of course. Truthfulness, and God is truth, according to um, theological understandings which are human understandings of God, so they have um, incompleteness, shall we say, uh, because we're human. Um, that's another issue. Um, but we know about changing perceptions because marketing does it all the time in the in in uh, um, you know in the Western world. Um, you know, marketeers 
sales people will attempt to change your perception of a product, for example, for good or for bad. You know, just the bad, pro the, the other, the competitor's product, big up their own product in order that you um, make a choice, and the choice is to do what they want. So, by changing perceptions. Um, influences can be brought to bear for better or worse and it's according to the truthfulness or otherwise of the information provided. That's why it's important to have truthful information. And our resultant choice. Um, uh, the resultant choice affects the outcomes. So in other words, for example, if you have information that your neighbor is suffering and you do nothing about it and you could have done something about it and uh, you know it was sensible and all the rest of it, then uh, you're um, actually um, having a problem possibly for yourself and possibly for your neighbor. So that's, that's um, an example. And of course, in Christian uh, theology, um, your neighbor is, is, is not just um, somebody present physically next door to you. Now, this experience where um, various outcomes occur as a result of the exercise of our own self-control or free will, um, this experience of choice and self-control over um, outcomes of good and evil um, also um, could be said to be um, about the dominion over our environment. We have the chance to choose what we do with the environment. We might have dominion over it. Um, but if you take uh, scriptural understandings, we have dominion over the earth, and yet we choose to do bad things with that dominion. So our choices have been bad in the past and in many cases we need to repent as we did with uh, DDT and when we change our laws and this sort of thing. So um, uh, dominion over our environment does not mean the opportunity to abuse uh, that environment, whether it be um, plants, animals or people in my view. We need to exercise free will and self-control and love and truth and do it that way rather than um, trying to um, change things um, that are we know are going to be unhelpful to ourselves or to others, whether those be other species or other um, living things, shall we say. I've explained in my previous video some ideas that I have liked to suggest um, on free will. Um, no. um, right, now we have a danger. I spoke about volition. Um, where the internal truth of the conscientious life is deadened. Volition decreases and it, it goes like this and it tightens up and it's horrible. And we cannot succeed in our sensible aims. Or the intended results are delayed perhaps. Now that's a bit that I don't quite understand and maybe that's what Rabbi Jonathan Sachs refers to about not knowing. I don't know. But be that as it may, um, fear not, said he, um, it's all the kind of fear of God that brings wisdom, in my view. It's not the kind of fear that is a fearfulness of evil. Because we needn't fear evil, because uh, the devil is God's footstool, actually. And we shouldn't curse it either, but that's another matter. Um, I'll come to that a little bit later on. Now, um, so... Uh, I'd just like to touch briefly on, uh, so, so, so I've mentioned about information loss, changing perceptions, and therefore changing our behavior um, according to, um, we can make various choices, um, and so we can either choose to rebel um, against um, the uh, um, uh, likely outcome, 
uh, and uh, or we can rebel against a outcome which we know in ourselves, our conscious, conscientious life is not helpful in an empathetic way to others or ourselves. And it is possible, according to the latest psychological uh, research, that you can teach empathy, actually, or teach compassion, at least. Um, I don't know about empathy, but you can teach compassion. So if you can teach compassion, then you can also teach volition, I would suggest. And this is what possibly DBT, and maybe in a lighter sense, CBT does. I don't know. That I have to think about. Um, Right. So, um, now, just, oh yes, I want to touch on information loss. Now, here's an example of something that, uh, as Christians, would say possibly um, that Jesus has done. Uh, he um, uh, has forgiven us. How does he forgive us? Well, he wipes, slate the, uh, he wipes the slate clean so that there is information loss, you might say. Right? Because... Um, at one time there was a blot, and then there is no blot, because the price is paid. So this is information loss, right? because um, uh, information is removed, the blot, the information is removed. Uh, the blot on your copybook, it's gone. Jesus has forgiven you. You are free. You're back to a state of free will again, you see. Oh, and incidentally, I love the idea of free will that Rabbi Jonathan Sachs talks about, where he says that um, we know that we have free will, uh, we, we can't escape from having free will, in the sense that if we choose to do something at one point and then repent later, then that means that we have exercised free will, because it demonstrates that we are not constrained by our genetic and psychology and nature and nurture and and uh, um, choices and so on to do the same thing again and make the same mistakes we don't have to make the same mistakes we're not constrained we have free will and that's the evidence for it and I like that I think he's right on that personally speaking um, so information loss can also be related to forgiveness because it prevents knowledge of sin and rebellion causing guilt you see? So, um, it, it, in fact, you see, there's another way that information loss. See, it's not only really just by forgiveness, but, you see, if you don't know how to sin, then you cannot do it. So, actually, it's impossible to rebel. So, sometimes, God actually removes information. Now, there's helpful information and there's unhelpful information. And there are those that would like to control what is helpful and what is unhelpful as though they were God. Fortunately, that's not possible, I don't suppose, because we all give off micro-signals, and um, it's not possible to lie to, you can't lie to all of the people all of the time, if I might um, coin an aphorism or whatever the correct phraseology for it is. Um, so, uh, you, can't lie, you, can't, uh, you can't cheat all the people all of the time, let's say. I mean... Uh, maybe some human being might try it, but he can't cheat God, let's put it that way, because God is perfect. He might cheat all of the human beings, but um, uh, God is God, and then the outcome will be the outcome that, that God knows about. Not forces, knows about. Um, now, God, in the Christian tradition, is the true good judge and advocate and if that's the case that is exactly why he should remove information for forgiveness sake and remove information for the sake of preventing rebellion for our own sake because he is a good God to reject him the good true God judge and advocate that's the one who fights on our behalf when we sin because Jesus is there which is awesome that sense of fear. To reject him is to rebel against the relational information he has provided in truth to us, because he is truth. <sighs> yeah. um, uh, by this information, this is the opportunity for good or evil. So, you see, by having the information, as it says in Genesis, that is the opportunity 
And it's an opportunity. It isn't a certainty. That's the point. It's an opportunity for good and evil. It wasn't actually. Um, I mean, God knew what would happen because he's omniscient. But he didn't make it happen. Now, why, you know, I mean, why would he want suffering if he's good? It doesn't make sense. And that's always been the conundrum. So, you see, but if you understand that by relating, which is the first thing we started with, if you remember, effective relationship partly involves communicating truthful information and freely entered into love by the exercise of self-control. Right? So, this means that um, that uh, uh, um, uh, information is communicated in relationship and by the fact of communication of information evil becomes a possibility it's not an inevitability if it was an inevitability then God would surely be unfair but it is not an inevitability and he's told us if you believe scripture that in fact he will be the winner. We know this as Christians. Well, we believe it by faith, of course. And it is impossible to be his God without faith. I know I'm speaking very rapidly. Um, but this is why both good and evil are present in this life. It's because God relates to his people because he created us. And life relates to God because... It's impossible, uh, I, I think it's impossible, I'm, this is my understanding, I don't, it's just my understanding at the moment, that um, if God is the creator, he relates to his people, and this is why we have the strange phenomenon that's been recently known in cosmology of information loss. Um, and so, um, uh, you know, and there's information loss in forgiveness that, that, that Christ provides as well. And so by this means God actually intervenes. He's not some callous creature that does nothing. He actually does it by information. That's a very powerful... Information technology is a very powerful thing, as we know. I'm speaking to you on YouTube. But, uh, um, but this is why, in my view, there is both good and evil present in life, because we are relational beings, and we are re relating to God, and he is relating to us, and therefore communicative processes mean that information is exchanged, and therefore um, evil is a possibility. But it doesn't flourish, because God removes information and provides information. Without relating, no information communication would be possible, nor would life be possible, probably. It is practically impossible for us to have total information communication control. I guess history will tell me that, but that's what my guess is, that it is impossible to have total information communication control. I would suggest that that's because we all, as human beings, give off microsignals, and we could all be in pods and don't have any relation at all with each other, but then we'd still need resources to live, and so therefore we would relate to one another, because there'd be an external something. We can't be entities without having some connection with one another in some way, shape, or form, in my view. Thus, it is impossible to prevent the excesses that are undoubtedly possibilities. They are not. They are not. Inevitabilities. About poor relational information communication. So, in other words, if you attempt to control your information communication, that can be useful, but you've got to do it very judiciously and very carefully, perhaps. Because you're taking on the role, the role that God has. Now, God has ordained people. Um, sorry, uh, I, I'll take away the word ordained there. That, uh, I, I mean, I don't mean, when I say ordained, I mean 
um, both temporal and religious leaders. That, that's what I meant. I meant that he has seen fit that they are... Um, uh, I don't know if I meant the word temporal. I may have used the wrong word there. But I meant earthly leaders, you know, of all sorts. Because God has, has given us those. We requested them. In Judaic tradition, we, we requested a king. And so God gave us one. Um, and uh, so, therefore, um, you know, uh, uh, this is the role that is that we have requested, and we've been given it. Um, and uh, so, um, uh, you know, that's that's God's kindness in answering our uh, request. You might say. Well, I don't know if it is kindness, but. I assume that it is. If my theory is right, it would seem that it is a kindness. Um, because as frail human beings, we don't want to relate to God, we'd rather relate to a human being. So temporarily, he arranges for human beings to control us, instead of us being controlled by our um, self-free um, um, will, in response, now this is the crucial thing, in response to our conscientious life, which is that which is the divine spark that God provides in terms of information for us, perhaps, in simplification, I suppose. Something like that. I don't quite understand that. Uh, the important thing here is truth and choice, which creates the possibility of both peace and sorrow. That's what I'm trying to say as well. If we choose self-control based on the relational information we gain, then we will prosper. If we choose freely, then we will not be attempting to influence the predicted future outcome, mindfulness, which we do not know for certain anyway. All our thoughts are theory, even current proofs may be superseded later, such as Newtonian physics is replaced by Einsteinian physics, etc., 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 and changing perceptions. I mean, um, one brand is mm, de facto one year, and the next year it goes out of fashion, and you get something else coming along because they spent more money on it, or something like that. Um, a lack of exercising free will results in sin, and that's the rebellion bit, and we are not exercising self-control. Man has God asked God for leaders. Let them rule wisely, it seems. For he has given them for his good purposes, it says in scripture, I believe. He uses them just as the devil is God's footstool and should not be cursed. So we should not curse what God uses. God uses leaders, actually for his good purpose. Now that's not to say that leaders should be bad, because otherwise they're not exercising self-control and love and truth. And then they must, uh, you know, be influenced by information. So they need to uh, be provided with information, so we need to talk to them, and provide them with feedback on their performance levels, shall we say, performance level targets. I don't, I don't mean to be flippant, but, um, uh, you know, um, but, uh, um, I mean, I don't wish to prescribe how leaders should do their things. I'm just simply saying that um, we need to communicate as citizens with our leaders because they cannot have, if they don't have any feedback, how will they know how they're performing in terms of whether they're doing things well or not? They don't have any information, so they don't have any ability to change their responses unless we help them. Um, so... But um, they have been put there by God, um, and therefore, although they have the, the choice to be evil, um, they have been put there. So, uh, therefore, um, we you know, should be kind to them, just as we should be kind to everybody else. But um, uh, that's not to say that they can't make mistakes, just like every other human being. In my view, um, without evil present life, sorry, uh, let me do that, I'll just say that again more accurately, without evil present, life cannot be, because 
evil is a result of choices that we make. Uh, if we make choices that harm, then that uh, and rebel uh, against um, what is in our conscientious life, shall we say, um, and only God knows what the heart, and the heart is very pernicious and can trick us and all sorts of things like that. Um, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, so, um, without evil present, life cannot be. Um, so, it's actually part of life, is what I'm suggesting, in the way that things are set up. Um, uh, I mean, I don't understand how it could have been any, any different. And, and since God is the creator, um, he sort of knows what he's doing. I mean, he knows a bit more than I do, for instance. He probably knows more than... Uh, well. um, that depends on your definition, but it's impossible to please God without faith. And if you don't have faith in God, then um, you may as well um, harm everyone, I suppose. Um, but you won't succeed, in my view. So, that's okay. Um, you can try, but you'll harm yourself in the process. And I don't think you really want to do that. Um, and if you do want to do it, then I suggest that you will be constrained. If you... you know, I, I would suggest that. I would suggest that. Um, I don't know more about it than that. That's that's something which um, which requires more thought. We're in an imperfect scenario in terms of human understanding, shall we say? But certainly, self-control is much better. So is free will, because you feel better. Um, so, God does intervene through our faith sometimes, and other times by His divine provision. What do I mean by our faith? Well, when we put our faith in what we know to be right within our con conscientious life, rather than going against that and rebelling against it, in other words, putting faith in the truth, then uh, that results in good things happening to us and other people. Um, in the ultimate sense of it I'm talking about. The ultimate, the ultimate sense of it. Um, but sometimes... Um, his divine provision or removal of information which relates to forgiveness perhaps and as I said before um, this uh, strange cases of theories of information loss in the universe um, some cosmological understandings which have come to light recently that I don't understand at this point um, um, Whereas the true God relates perfectly, we know only in part and don't know the future as he knows the past, present and future perfectly and thus exercises his good and perfect will. So he is able to exercise his perfect free will um, perfectly uh, and, and self-controlledly and lovingly and truthfully so that he is empathetic and is good um, uh, contrary to what uh, some people might believe. Sadly, because it hurts them, that false belief, in my view. To know his love, which is information, uh, sorry, which relates to information on relations with him, and truth, God is truth, brings peace. And he is the Prince of Peace, as we know. Or as we have faith. We have free will because he relates to us in truth and also in relating 
the possibility of evil exists too because information is available through relational communications. I'll say that again. We have free will because he relates to us in truth and also in relating the possibility of evil exists too because information is available through relational communications. Without relationship, life is very difficult, I would suggest. Through our multiple choices together, that's all of us, we co-create the future, which he knows and has told us some things about that does not force us and does not tell us everything. We do not know the day or the hour. And he knows the outcome in, in advance, but we do not. We have self-control opportunity because he has provided and removed appropriate information, which means we have information relating to good and evil. If the information has truth, that is, and we may relate effectively with our Creator by exercising loving self-control and we will experience greater volition towards the known outcome that's known by God, not by us necessarily, because we are not attempting to rebel against the predicted outcome. So we attempt to predict it and we rebel against that and then that causes the problem, you see. Um, instead of saying what is the conscientious life saying, what is the right thing to do if you want to phrase it like that, and then doing what the right thing is not. Some notional thing but the actual truth of it and that sometimes is hard to discern. I'm not saying that it isn't hard to discern. Sometimes it's very hard to discern because we're human and we don't listen. We don't listen to the information around us and that's why it's hard to know sometimes. And sometimes because there's an absence of information because of his good and perfect will. Instead, we may act using the information to exercise informed choice or self-control or free will as we listen to our conscience carefully and mindfully and prayerfully. If we act using our free will based on the information we have been provided by our loving God, not by external control necessarily, necessarily because some external control can be beneficial, not saying that all external control is not beneficial because God has instituted things because we asked him for it. Um, and he has is, is instituted it uh, for his good and purpose, his good uh, loving purpose. So that's what there is. Um, but that doesn't excuse people from not exercising their own consciences about these things and being nasty to other people if they're leaders. But by loving, so, uh, truthful self-control, so it has to be truthful, uh, and that's where the trust element comes in, and this is where we must communicate with our leaders, and they must communicate back with us. It must be a relationship, in my view, with our leaders, rather than a one-way, you know, where we tell them what to do or, or they tell us what to do. It's got to be a collaboration with our leaders, hopefully, so that it works. There will be less suffering. So, God has provided a way. by providing information and removing information as he relates to us. God isn't silent. He provided scripture and the teachers. Um, he speaks through many informational ways, through nature, through our hearts and minds, through our consciences, very important, internal, um, so internal and external communication 
as he relates with us. Um, this means that we can intervene, and so does he. And this is why he's good. He does intervene. He intervenes informationally, and he intervenes by getting us to do things. And some people, by faith, believe that he does these amazing things, which, I don't know, may or may not break some understandings that we might have about the laws of physics or whatever. But actually, there's probably something that we don't know about that allows that to happen. So, miracles can probably happen within the actual laws of physics, if you like. But, they might break the laws that we currently understand of physics, because we don't understand it all yet. And if we did, we'd be God. And we're not. Um, in addition, many people by faith believe he intervenes in their lives too, in special ways. And that's faith. And it's impossible to please God without faith. A good earthly father knows what to tell and not to tell, uh, what to tell and not to tell his children when and where. So it's a good person that knows about that. I hope that I'm doing the right thing. But it seems that there's an awful lot of people that are suffering under the misapprehension that God is an actually very cruel person. And that's why I'm doing this. Because I don't believe he is a cruel person or a cruel being. Actually, he does intervene, and this is what it seems I have come to, and that's why I'm providing this information, because it means that some people will suffer less, one hopes. And a good earthly father knows what is best for them to do and not to do, and when to do it and how to do it and all the rest of it. Um, uh, and and a bad father will do things that are inappropriate or shouldn't be done. Uh, and that is um, because he's not exercising proper self-control. And uh, that is wrong, because that harms the child and harms society. And so that should never be done. And that is called abuse, and that is wrong. And leaders can abuse their people, too. And people can abuse their leaders. And that's wrong. In my view. As I understand it. And I might be wrong. But that's my understanding. And I'm just sharing it with you. I hope I'm right. And I hope that it eases somebody suffering. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. But he does discipline. That's God and the Good Father. Yes, I believe that. But he doesn't force, in my view. And psychology teaches us these days increasingly that force is not the way. Discipline is, but force is not. And there's a difference, actually. Um, that's my view, and that's my understanding. Our Heavenly Father, however, is perfect, whilst we are not. And so, as parents, um, it's impossible to, um, for a parent, any parent, um, to get it 100% right 100% of the time. And that's just because we are imperfect, whereas God is perfect. God is not unfair in my view. He has powerfully intervened and continues his various interventions. Praise be the name of the Lord. Without faith it is impossible to please God. So I'm getting a bit tired now, but I'm nearly the end of my notes. If we allow false... Now, this is the uh, sort of warning, right? Okay. So, if we allow false information to rule our perceptions, that's an external control rather than self-control, and thus do not exercise self-control, we will not be self-actualizing, we will lack love and truth, because it's a lie, you're believing something which is not inside your... Um, self-control your conscience um, and uh, so um, you will be harming others and yourself potentially and you will be rebelling and rejecting God and causing yourself and or others to feel pain and increase the suffering and hurt all the more um, uh, 
due to us cutting ourselves apparently off from the source of good relating in love and truth. So, um, it's not that God uh, doesn't intervene and doesn't care about human suffering. He cares very much about it. And that is why he uh, has arranged for forgiveness and information loss and information provision so that we know how we can avoid suffering. That is a valuable thing about information provision. We know, we learn how you can heal somebody's um, antibiotic situation. By knowing about antibiotics, this information actually has saved lives. It's, it's prevented suffering, actually. That information has saved lives. It has prevented terrible pain, actual physical pain, that suffering, through information. But on the other hand, information about um, let's say um, uh, bubble gum on a um, street could be used so that an old person could um, accidentally trip and somebody could um, uh, uh, place it there deliberately and that would be using information as a cruel and nasty thing and it might be that God decides about something like that and I would suggest that he very much cares about it I don't know always how he works, but I suggest that some of what he does is to do with information control, because he can, and we can't, not to that extent. In essence, there will be no peace without self-control and the exercise of free will in truth and love. I hope that helps. Please do consider whether you're self-controlling and listening to your conscience. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>